Welcome back for a new video. Today we're going to look back and see how good Brazil's international side was in 2005. This was a highly successful period for Brazilian football, winning the Copa America in 2004 and 2007. Not to mention, they won the 2002 World Cup, unbelievably, the last one they were victorious in. Obviously this side is going to be very good, but let's deep dive and see what some of these players went on to achieve in their careers. So here is the side itself. Competition for places is going to be tough, but without further ado, let's get into this team. Starting out in goal, it's going to be Dida. He went on to have a legendary career, winning a Serie A title with AC Milan and two UEFA Champions League. Earlier in his career at Cruzeiro, he also won a Copa Libertadores, so he's probably in quite an exclusive list of players who've won both. Interestingly, it looks like he retired in 2015, aged 41. A top player though, and one of the best keepers I've ever seen. At right back, it's going to have to be Cafu. This is arguably the most competitive position in the entire squad, with Valetti and 22-year-old Dani Alves sitting on the bench. It has to be Cafu though, another absolute legend of the sport, and the only guy to ever appear in three World Cup finals. Opposite him, it's going to be Roberto Carlos. An unbelievable player in his prime a great defender, and also more than capable free-kick taker. He would win four Spanish league titles and three Champions Leagues at Real Madrid, eventually leaving the club in 2007 to join Fenerbahce. In the centre of the defence, I've gone with Lucio and Juan. At the time of this game in 2005, both were plying their trade in the Bundesliga, with Bayern Munich and Bayer Leverkusen respectively. Lucio would leave Bayern a few years later though and join Inter Milan. Here he would go on to win a UEFA Champions League title. Juan would also move to Italian football later in his career. He did win a few cups with Roma before departing for his native Brazil, playing at Flamengo. The two deep lying midfielders will be Emerson and Janinho. Emerson, as you can see, was an elite level defensive midfield player playing at Juventus. Alongside him, Janinho, probably best remembered for his unbelievable free kicks. For many years, he lit up the Stade de Guerlande with Lyon before going to play in Qatar. He finished his career at Vasco da Gama in Brazil. For the three players behind the striker, I've gone with Ronaldinho, Kaká, and Robinho. None of these guys need any introduction. Kaká will go in at central attacking midfielder. In his prime here, he was an unstoppable player. He would win titles in Italy and Spain, and a Champions League for Milan. A big money move to Madrid materialised, but he failed to replicate the form he had with AC. He finished his career with Orlando City in the MLS. Ronaldinho is going to be out wide on the left. One of the most recognisable players of the last few decades, he started his career with Gremio. PSG brought him to Europe, but after a particularly disastrous season, they failed to qualify for European football. Barcelona moved in with a 30 million euros bid to lure him to the new camp. The rest, they say, is history. The final player in the starting 11 will be Ronaldo. Another highly competitive position that sees Adriano remain on the bench. It's pretty crazy, really. Wagner Lowe, Fred, didn't even make the squad here. But this Ronaldo is more or less incomparable. Coming off a strong season at Real Madrid with 21 goals in the league, he eventually would move on to AC Milan before retiring in his native country with Corinthians. I won't go into detail with all of the subs, but we can have a look at a few of them. Julio Cesar, an elite goalkeeper, probably would have started for any other country in the world. Ed Nielsen, the versatile Barcelona defender, was a great player in his prime. 22-year-old Dani Alves, at the time of this video, the most decorated footballer in history with 43 trophies. Gilberto Silva, part of Arsenal's invincible side, he formed a formidable partnership with Patrick Vieira. After leaving Arsenal, he also managed to win a Copa Libertadores with Atletico Mineiro. The aforementioned Adriano, a top player in his prime, he won four league titles with Inter before departing for Flamengo in his native Brazil. So yeah, Overall, they weren't lacking on the talent front, 
Amazingly though, this was the last Brazil era to win the World Cup, and after another abject display in Qatar, losing out to Croatia on penalties in the quarter final, the present still looks pretty bleak for the five-time champions. Only the future will tell if they can return to the form which made them such formidable opposition in the past. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video.